there was an elephant in the room. So just stop for a minute and visualize that, wherever you are, an actual elephant inside the room. He's about 11 feet tall at the shoulder, about 20 feet long, flapping his ears like 15 feet wide. This is an enormous issue. I lived with the proverbial elephant in the room for eight years. That's a challenge. In order to adjust your life to a disruption of that magnitude, there's a lie you have to tell yourself. It's okay, I'm fine. I convinced myself that this was true. It's okay. If my husband looks at porn, it, it doesn't really affect me. All men look at porn. It's not that big of a deal. Besides, I'm a busy mom. I've got two kids. I'm exhausted. It's okay. I'm fine. Maybe you've told yourself some version of that lie. Meanwhile, there is an elephant pooping on your carpet, eating your furniture, and putting holes in the sheetrock while you pretend it's no big deal. Denial was my coping mechanism of choice, and I was really good at it, and it worked for a long time. And I just have to say, denial is pretty great. It's kind of like a credit card. You get to just keep shopping, keep swiping. You don't have to worry about anything, just having a good time with your girlfriends, because you get to postpone the pain until some future date when the bill comes due. Denial can be a gift in the short term because it does buy us that time to process the events of our lives. That's the beauty of denial. We get to postpone the pain. It's also the trouble with denial because eventually that bill will come due and you will have to face it. Now, my husband and I both relied on denial. He compartmentalized his use of porn and told himself it only affected him. Well, I was telling myself the same thing. When we began to deal with the issue, there was almost an immediate sense of relief for him because the secret was out of the box and he didn't have to try to keep it hidden anymore. It was not a relief for me because here I am having to face the reality of my life after eight years of denial. That was a monumental task. How do you get an elephant out of the room? I see two options. You either tear down a wall or you tear apart the elephant. Either way, you have a huge, horrible mess on your hands, and it's gonna take a long time to clean that all up. The first time we went to our therapy group, Every couple went around the circle and we all have to tell our story, like why, what qualifies us to be here. And it's just uncomfortable, it's embarrassing, nobody wants to tell their story. Well, the second class, a new couple joined. So guess what that means? We tell the stories again. We go around the circle and it's horrible. Uh, the third week, a new couple joined the class. So we have to tell the story again, like this is torture. This is seriously cruel to have to keep repeating this story. Um, on the way to our fourth class, I remember just telling my husband, listen, if another couple shows up, I quit. I am not telling the story again. When I look back, I see that was the best possible thing for me. And I actually feel bad for all the other couples because I think God did that for me. I needed to tell the story. I needed to tell it again and again. This is my real life. This happened to me. This is why we're here. And that was one of the things that helped me break that habit of denial. I also started journaling, going through betrayal, and I I went and got just a leftover spiral notebook from the kids' school supplies because I didn't want a pretty journal. I wanted a place where I could just get all the ugly out, uh, where I don't have to be nice, and I don't have to spell things right, I don't have to be polite, I can just be real because that being real was a chore for me. The other thing that helped me break free from my denial habit was anger, and I blogged about that in the past. Anger, 
I got really angry and the anger scared me and it forced me to wake up to the reality of my life. So important to break free from denial because we really can't find healing until we admit that something is broken. I remember one day reading my Bible and coming across this phrase, love rejoices in the truth. And it just made me so mad. And I thought there is nothing in the truth of my life that anyone could rejoice over. And I'm complaining to God like, really, really? Love rejoices in the truth? How does that work? And I remembered another verse from the Bible where Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It is not okay. I am not fine. There's actually a lot of damage. There's a lot of pain. There's a huge mess here and I need help. Love rejoices when that lie is exposed. Love rejoices in the messy, ugly truth because love knows that acknowledging the truth is the first step toward freedom.